to Ohio State. Uh, some fall camp intel for you. They scrimmaged over the weekend. All the reports are telling us from LettermanRow.com, the Ohio State on three site. Again, JD1, $1 for one month. Uh, Will Howard is taking command of that offense. Right, And if you're an Ohio State fan, that's something you're encouraged to hear about because during the spring, he just got to campus. He's figuring out Columbus. He's figuring out Chip Kelly's system. And so it's very fair to have an acclimation process during the spring, especially if you just got on campus. But during fall camp, like if we're still talking about acclimating, it's, it's not necessarily the end-all be-all, but it's not a good sign, right? Like during fall camp, I want us to be locked and loaded, dialed in. That's the trend right now for Will Howard. And if you don't believe me, listen to his teammates. Like teammates, this is one of my many rules when it comes to kind of deciphering what's going on during fall camp is like men lie, women lie. Your teammates aren't going to lie. Like if you're making strides during practice, they will be very vocal about that. You have had multiple teammates of Will Howard's, guys that practice with him and against him every single day in Columbus saying, yeah, he's taking massive jumps. Yeah, he looks great. So Ryan Day is speaking to the media on Thursday. This would align right about with the historical timeline. Ryan Day has named a starter during fall camp, like mid-August. So keep an eye on that presser. Go ahead and get a membership to LettermanRow.com because they will let you know what's going on. Uh, I mean, I can just go down the list here. Andy Backstrom, Tim May, Spencer Holbrook, the whole team over there crushing all the content, all the coverage. So get a membership over there. Ohio State fans, make sure you are subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel. We've had a ton of y'all join the party within the last few months. We appreciate y'all so much for that. If you have not yet subscribed, college football season, it's here. Fall camp, it's here. Want y'all a part of everything that we're doing here going forward. We're going to talk a lot about your Buckeyes, so make sure you're subscribed. We appreciate y'all in advance for doing so. Uh, Seth McLaughlin, transfer center from Alabama to Ohio State. Now, Ohio State fans and college football fans in general know him because of that final play in the Rose Bowl and the way that the snap wasn't on the money. I'm just going to tell you what I've heard. Seth McLaughlin, since getting to Columbus, has had two bad snaps. I mean, you do the math on how many snaps he's probably had since he's gotten to Columbus. It's a pretty encouraging percentage. The feeling at Ohio State is it may not have been exclusively a Seth McLaughlin problem when it comes to those snaps that were a little bit errant last year at Alabama. That's all I'll say on that. But they feel good about the offensive line, Seth McLaughlin obviously being a part of that. Notice how the tune has changed now with how we talk about those big boys up front for Ohio State. Coming out of the spring, you're like, hey, is, is the offensive line going to be the governor on what they can do offensively? Because you got all the skill players. you got Will Howard. you got Chip Kelly. Like, Do they have what they need up front? Time will tell, but the feeling right now during fall camp is yes. Not a half-hearted yes, not a uh, we'll wait and see, because everything about college football is wait and see during this part of the year. But the vibe is, yeah, they're going to be good. All right, so those big boys up front, they like how they're going to operate running the football. And that's the big part of this whole thing for the Ohio State offense. Like Chip Kelly, man, known for a lot of things offensively, going up tempo, being creative. The overwhelming sentiment out of Letterman Row, again, Ohio State's on three site, is that this run game is going to be nasty. <laughs> like, th this, this run game will be nasty work, as they say. Quinshawn Judkins, Travion Henderson, that's the obvious part of it. Like, you got some horses that can freaking pound the rock for you. But the diversity of the run scheme is something they're very, very excited about in Columbus. They believe this is a running game that not just with the talent level, but just the scheme overall will be able to keep defenses on their toes. Tell you what, man, when, when you can run the ball, like that just makes everything easier. <laughs> like that, that's, that, that just makes everything for your offensive line, for your quarterback, heck, for your defense, for the, for the head coach, for the control of the game. Like that is the price of admission. So they feel really good about where that stands and uh, the offense overall with Will Howard making those strides. Sign to be encouraged if you're an Ohio State fan. Now, defensively, there's a lot of really uh, exciting notes to go over here. I'll start with Sonny Styles because he's kind of been the guy that I've uh, circled for this whole report. Like, he's a guy that played nickel and safety previously for Ohio State. I believe he's actually still listed on the roster on Ohio State's website as a safety. Uh, Y'all, he's six foot four, two hundred and forty pounds. <laughs> Not a whole lot of six foot four, two hundred and forty pound dudes that can run and be agile enough to play safety. They have since moved him to linebacker. Um, he's blowing it up right now. A guy with his instincts which to have the instincts to play safety should tell you a lot about his football acumen, then having the build and the physique 
and the physicality to then make a tackle at the safety position to go up and fill in the run support. Uh, he's going to, I think, blow up, as does the people at Letterman Row this upcoming fall. Sonny Styles, a guy to know, a guy to watch, among the other many known commodities within that Ohio State defense. There may not be a more known commodity as a group in Ohio State's defense than BIA, the secondary for Ohio State. Um, I mean, they're stacked. That's the obvious part. Like, Ignosin's a dude, like, getting to see him on the field last year in Columbus when we went out there for the Ohio State game, or excuse me, for the Ohio State-Penn State game, rather. Getting to see him in person, I was like, all right, that is, that's what an NFL corner is supposed to look like. Rangy, cut up, long wingspan, like, that, that's a dude now that is going to, I think, have a great year this year. Denzel Burke, his resume speaks for itself. Jordan Hancock is a guy they're super excited about. Obviously, Caleb Downs. So that's a list of names. But the, the note here is that this Ohio State secondary now, it's one thing to just like be really good and, and to practice hard and all those things. That's important. But like, I don't know about y'all. I want my secondary to be a little bit, uh, a little bit cocky. All my safeties and my corners to be a little bit arrogant. And the buzz out of Ohio State is this is the mouthiest secondary in America. You're saying, J.D., is that, is that really a good thing? Do you really want guys that are just chatterboxes? In, in college football, in a position where you are consistently put on an island at the corner position, or when you have to run up and make a tackle on a big 220-pound running back then also play pass coverage as a safety, yeah, I want your confidence just like delusionally through the roof. I love that. That honestly gets me fired up for Ohio State because we know they have the, the talent on that end to, uh, to back it up as well. Now, an interesting note on the overall scrimmage out of Saturday. Things got a little bit chippy. And if you don't know what I mean by that, not necessarily like a full-on brawl breaking out and things getting out of control because you see that around the NFL at different points when you see those joint practices. But like maybe there's a little bit of a skirmish, a little bit of pushing and shoving. And like, y'all, if you don't have that during your fall camp, I would be concerned. Like people say, oh, is it good to fight? Fighting and being chippy are different things. Like being chippy to me is like, okay, the competitive juices were so high in this competitive environment, they overflowed. And I'd much rather take an overflowing cup of competitive juice than have to try and get that thing up to the brim and push and, and try and get my team dialed in. Like that's not the situation at Ohio State right now. So that fires me up. I love that energy from them right now. And uh, again, we'll talk more about Chip Kelly and Will Howard a little bit later in the show. But so far out of Ohio State, fall camp is uh, operating as I think you would hope a national title contender kind of team would operate. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.